A little while back, I made a video talking about episodes I'd started but never finished, and one I mentioned was a piece on the Woolwich Ferry. And the response kind of took me by surprise. The comment section was full of people asking me to actually make the episode. Well, be careful what you wish for, because here it is. Crossing the Thames east of the City of London has always been a bit of a problem. Historically, shipping has always needed access upstream as far as the Pool of London, i.e. the bit between London Bridge and Tower Bridge. This makes building any more bridges a tricky one for engineers to figure out, especially east as the river gets wider. The solution at Woolwich was a ferry. Woolwich is unusual in that it's a London district that doesn't end at the river. Instead you have a North Woolwich and a... Uh, uh, just a regular Woolwich. So it makes a lot of sense to have a river crossing here. There has been a ferry operating here since at least the early 14th century. When Chaucer was writing the Canterbury Tales, the ferry was long established. It seems to have been a fairly lucrative venture. In 1320, the rights to operate it were sold for 100 marks, which, adjusting for inflation, comes to just over £180,000, or a couple of nights out in the West End. This was also the ferry favoured by King Edward II, and the owners of the franchise, if that's the correct term, petitioned to end the nearby Erith and Greenwich ferries for that very reason. So it went for the next 500 years. However, by the early 19th century, improvements were required. Woolwich was the home of the Royal Arsenal, the manufactory for the entire British armed forces. This was the time of the Napoleonic Wars, when Britain's armed forces were, to put it mildly, really up against it. So as you might imagine, transportation for the arsenal was a priority. In 1810, the army took matters into their own handies, founding their own ferry. The following year, a civilian ferry service was founded under an Act of Parliament which granted the Woolwich Ferry Company a monopoly. This lasted until 1844, when the Woolwich Ferry Company was folded up due to management incompetence. At that point, the train took the strain. In 1847, the Eastern Counties and Thames Junction Railway built a line to North Woolwich, with the specific intention of setting up a ferry service. There were two ferry boats, paddle steamers named Essex and Kent, with a third, larger one named Middlesex joining the small fleet in 1879. The ferry pier on the north side is still visible to this day, which was all very well, but by 1880 the people of Woolwich were starting to feel a little short-changed. If they wanted to cross the river, they had to pay the fare. Meanwhile, their rates went to the Metropolitan Board of Works and had been used to pay for a number of bridges further upstream. The Woolwichians Woolwichites, argued that it wasn't exactly fair for Woolwich to pay for other districts' free crossings, while they didn't benefit from anything similar. And that's just what they said to the Metropolitan Board of Works, who in 1884 agreed to fund a free ferry. New piers were constructed and new steamboats were ordered. On the 23rd of March 1889, the new service was officially opened. The ferry was a huge attraction in itself, drawing some 25,000 visitors to ride it. They came by train. If the railway company saw the popularity of the new ferry as an ill omen, they didn't say anything. There were three ferry boats, paddle steamers named Gordon, Duncan and Hatton. Traditionally, the Woolwich Ferries are named after prominent locals, and in this case they were named after General Gordon, Sir John Hatton of the London County Council, and Colonel Duncan, MP. The boats were designed by Sir Joseph Bazalgette, who is perhaps most famous for being the man behind London's sewer system. But let's just say, this was one design that didn't stink. Now, you'd think it would be a mistake to try to compete with free, but nevertheless, the railway decided in 1891 that they were going to have a go, and invested in a new boat of their own, the Woolwich. Eventually, in 1908, they gave up and had their South Pier demolished. They kept the North Pier for steamer excursions to Tilbury and Margate. If you're curious about the railway, I've made a video going into its history in more detail, which I'll link below and possibly up above. 
1912, the Woolwich Foot Tunnel was opened, offering an alternative river crossing for pedestrians. Between 1922 and 1930, four more paddle steamers were purchased to replace the old ones. These were the Gordon, again, the Squires, the Will Crooks, and the John Ben. They gave excellent service, but by the 1960s they were showing their age. The big problem was the rise in motor vehicle ownership. Motor vehicles were that much heavier than the horse-drawn carts of the early 20th century. The boats were side-loaded, which for larger lorries was very cumbersome. In fact, for many motorists, the Blackwall Tunnel was a more attractive means of getting across the river quickly. So in 1963, modernisation came in the form of three end-loading motor ferries named the John Burns, the James Newman and the Ernest Bevan. New approaches to the ferries were also built, being completed in 1966. Various organisations have been responsible for running the ferry over the years. Initially it was the London County Council, which had been formed literally a couple of days before the ferry opened. In 1965, the Greater London Council took over and continued to run it until they were dissolved in 1986, having wound Margaret Thatcher up one too many times. The London Borough of Greenwich subsequently took charge. In 2008, they handed it over to Serco, a massive company responsible for, among other things, Electronic tagging, young offenders institutes, immigration detention centres, waste disposal, nuclear weapons and the London Cycle Hire Scheme. Briggs Marine was awarded the contract in 2010 and in 2020 London River Services took over. London River Services is a division of Transport for London. In 2017, two new ferries replaced the old ones. These are diesel electric vessels, 210 metres long, with space for 150 foot passengers and special accommodation for bicycles. Although when I visited there were only 5 foot passengers, so it was pretty spacious. The current vessels are named after Dame Vera Lynn, singer and icon of World War II, and Ben Woolacott. Woolacott was actually an employee of the ferry service who was tragically killed in 2011 when a mooring rope he was releasing was caught in the propeller of the Ernest Bevan, hurling him against the vessel's side and dragging him under. He was only 19 at the time. The accident was blamed on a lack of risk assessment and poor oversight. His father, also a waterman, gave his approval to the naming of the new vessel. And that brings the story of the Woolwich Ferry up to the present day. Every so often someone will suggest constructing an alternative crossing. But really, it's been over 700 years and I don't think the ferry is going anywhere, but back and forth. Well, I hope this video floated your boat. If so, then I would be most grateful if you could click the like button. You may even wish to subscribe for more. I don't know. Thanks as ever to my donors on Kofi and Patreon, you are the free ferry to my bisected borough. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.